With today's smartphones, you can take amazing video and photos right from your phone with no DSLR or cinema camera required. In this video, I'm gonna share five tips on how you can create awesome videos on your phone. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning into my channel. Blaze here with Moves Media, and today we're gonna to be talking about cameras on smartphones and five tips on how you can get really great footage using something like this. In today's new cell phone technology age, Cameras on smartphones are one of the biggest selling features for cell phones. And I know people who are even trying to start companies filming on only a smartphone. You can get additional lenses, and now with the new iPhone uh, and the new Galaxy phones, you have different zoom abilities. So you can really get super creative and create really professional stuff using your cell phone. I've always been a firm believer that the most important thing about shooting video isn't your camera or your quality, but more what you're shooting and how you're composing things. Now, obviously your smartphone isn't gonna be able to do everything that a DSLR camera can do. There are definitely advantages for using a better and more expensive camera, but there are some easy, simple techniques that you can do to make your footage a lot better. For the examples that we're using in this video, we're gonna be shooting on the iPhone XR, also gonna be throwing some Galaxy Samsung S8 Plus clips in the mix, um, but these tips that we're gonna be sharing really do apply to any smartphone that you have. So let's get into five tips on how you can take better footage using your smartphone. So tip number one is focus on your frame. When we're shooting on a smartphone, we typically wanna shoot in landscape mode to get nice, wide, cinematic looking footage. So turn your phone on its side and make sure to shoot in this orientation. You also wanna really focus on your frame and what's in your frame. So getting creative angles, changing it up, getting close to objects, far away from objects, and really trying to compose things that really look good within the frame itself. Symmetry or just different unique colors, not leaving a lot of white space. There's so many things that you can do just by focusing on your frame and trying to create the most unique and aesthetically pleasing image when you shoot video. Tip number two is get close to whatever you're shooting. A lot of amateur people who are shooting video tend to shoot really far, far back, getting these wide, wide shots no matter what they're shooting. But I really encourage you to get up close and personal with the objects or subjects that you're filming because it's really gonna capture the mood of the experience and really portray to the viewer the feeling of whatever it is you're shooting. Getting tight, detailed shots really adds more flavor and interest to that framed composition and it's just gonna be more professional compared to a wider, less interesting frame that you could shoot. I tend to worry less about cutting off certain parts of an object or a subject and more about just creating that dynamic look in the frame. People find that up close look with more detail really interesting so I prefer to focus on getting that up close and personal shot than those really far away wide shots where there's just very little emotion in your footage. Smartphones also tend to have a lot less dynamic range. So if you're filming in situations where there's really bright sun and also really dark shadows, it's gonna struggle exposing the frame properly. So you always wanna orientate subjects where they're facing the light and you wanna have that nice even light in your frame and not try to avoid having really high contrasted areas. Tip number three is use short clips. Now, I say this time and time again, and it's probably one of the biggest tips that I give to amateur videographers or filmmakers, and that's keep your clips short. That includes the when you're shooting and also in the editing process. A lot of people tend to just follow the action, keep that record button going, and then they'll end up with a mess of footage. It'll be daunting to go through it all, and you really won't use 90% of it. Always think about what you're gonna shoot before you hit that record button, and then make sure that you're keeping each individual shot nice and short. Typically you want it five seconds, that's a long time. So really think about what you're gonna shoot, and instead of doing one continuous shot that captures a whole bunch of in-between garbage, break up your shots so you can get a really tight shot of someone's face that leads into a wide shot to show where they are, that leads into the, a close shot of the action or a point of interest. So tie your footage together with different clips instead of just getting one continuous shot of a really long sequence. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a short clip where we're basically showing you the exact same thing, but the shorter clip sequence is doing it much more succinctly and more interesting with 
more dynamic angles and shorter clips versus the longer version, which is much more amateur looking and really just has a lot of wasted space or unnecessary footage that doesn't really add any value to the video itself. Tip number four is stability. Now, first sign of an amateur filmmaker or videographer is shaky footage. You really wanna avoid that at all costs and there's some really easy things you can do to make sure that your footage is nice and smooth. The first thing is get some static shots. If you wanna move around and get wild, crazy uh, shots when you're, when you're filming, before you do, just get a nice, easy, static shot where you can lock your elbows, keep your phone nice and steady, and your footage is gonna be nice and stable. Then you can get a more dynamic movement where you're just moving the camera very so subtly to add some cinematic level to your footage, but it's still keeping it nice and, nice and steady. Then if you wanna get super crazy, get your wild shot where you're running after people, but nine times out of 10, that shaky shot just isn't gonna look as good, not gonna look as professional, and you're gonna use the shots that have less movement but more stability over the crazy movement shots that are super shaky. There are also a bunch of tools that you can use to keep your footage nice and stable, including a tripod or something to hold your camera like this little thing where it's a lot easier to have its nice smooth footage with this type of setup versus holding it handheld. But use what you have. There's definitely ways to do it both ways. So if you have one of these, it's helpful. But if you don't, you can still get that nice stable footage using um, just being handheld with your, your phone. Tip number four is your audio. Audio makes video look so much more professional, assuming you have good quality audio. When you use the audio on your smartphone, typically it's just not that great. It's gonna be echoey indoors, and you're really just not gonna get that crisp sound that you get using some kind of external microphone. So definitely something to consider if you wanna improve your, the quality of your videos is get some kind of microphone and improve that audio. As you can see, when we're going, we can go back and forth between the professional lab that I'm currently using or the camera audio. You can definitely hear the difference, and I'm sure you can tell which one sounds better getting that professional audio is gonna sound much, much better than using the audio from your smartphone. So definitely something to consider if you wanna improve your overall quality. One additional bonus tip that I wanted to share that's gonna make your footage look a lot more cinematic is using slow motion. Slow motion actually can stable out your footage, especially if you're getting fast shots with movement. It's gonna make your footage look a lot more smooth. And it also looks incredibly cinematic to have slow motion um, footage within a given sequence. I'll often shoot at around 60 frames per second and add that slow motion for fast moving elements or just regular activities that just make it more unique. Or I'll sometimes even bump, bump it up to 120 frames per second to just really get some incredibly smooth slow motion. Typically smartphones can get 60 frames per second, some can get 120. So play around with it, incorporate slow motion in your sequences, and I'm sure you're going to be happy with the cinematic look and the more professional caliber that comes out with your video. And that is it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful, and I really encourage you to get out and shoot using your smartphone. It is incredible what these things can do. Um, one of the best ways to learn and apply these tips is to just choose a sequence and create some unique B-roll. So get out there, start shooting, have fun with it, and uh, let me know what any tips that you might have for shooting on your smartphone or creating videos on your smartphone. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Make sure to smash that like button if you like this video. Consider subscribing and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.